Then I'm very happy to introduce Yara Castaneira to you. She comes to us traveling a long way from Brazil. She comes from Inotim, which is, um, I hope I pronounce this right, which is um, a big botanical garden and educational center and art space or art place for the arts, for contemporary arts. And Yara, um, she is head of education at Inutim. She studied uh, media communication and cultural studies as well as social communications. And um, she's now going to tell us about the educational aspects at Inutim and how they bring together science and the arts. Okay, good afternoon. Is it working? Yes. Um, I'm really very happy to be here in Berlin, where I lived for seven years. So it's always a pleasure to be back in the city. And I'd like to thank the organization team and Anita for the invitation. So, uh, in your team is a hybrid institution because it is, at the same time, a botanical garden and a museum for contemporary art. It is located in Brumadinho, close to Belo Horizonte, the capital of the state Minas Gerais. As you can see in the map, uh, on the south you have Sao Paulo state and Rio de Janeiro, and then uh, Espírito Santo. So uh, yes, it's kind of in the middle uh, of Brazil. And thinking about the, the title of this panel, Blurring Boundaries, some questions come to my mind. And uh, Christine was talking about pleasure. And it's that many times people expect uh, to, that art will be beautiful. So in your team, uh, visitors are confronted also with um, discomfort. So how many feelings can a piece of art trigger? How much discomfort and strangeness can arise from uh, during a tour through art galleries and gardens? What kind of doubts can emerge when we visit a museum? And how can cultural institutions help us to cope with the complexity of society? And what are the challenges of working in a transdisciplinary and transverse, transverse way? So in my opinion, to merge different areas of knowledge, first of all, we have to bring people together. So also in, the, in Janet's talk, where she talked about empathy. So uh, we need to work uh, in a collaborative, inclusive manner with generosity and transparency. Um, so to bring people together, definitely we need to learn to see diversity as a strength and not as a weakness. So especially in Brazil, um, a place where we have a huge diversity, but at the same time, um, high rates of social inequality. This is a very crucial point. Uh, and besides that, two other things that I consider important in the educational field, and also it comes to blurring boundaries, are courage and the wish uh, to change. So if we think of the word courage uh, in Latin, then the core from the heart and the articum, the action, so it could be seen as the, the uh, an action of the heart. So to keep a curious heart. And um, so it, not, it doesn't mean the absence of fear, but the ability to manage fear and uh, the, the courage to undertake, to undertake those changes and take risks. I've missed it, uh, many opportunities in life because I was afraid of failure, of judgment, of isolation. So um, I think that to blur boundaries, we need to have this desire to change and also the courage to undertake it and look to ourselves and empathize with others. An inspir inspiration for my work in the field of education is uh, Wilhelm Flusser. 
Czech uh, philosopher, naturalized Brazilian, who moved to Brazil in 1940 and lived there for 30 years. And uh, Fluster, for him, he believed that uh, teaching should cause restlessness and provoke zones of intercultu uh, intercultural, of intellectual subversion in the receivers. Uh, so it's about generating doubts and questions. And I consider him an example of someone who celebrated transdisciplinarity in daily life. Uh, this is a cartogram made for an exhibition last year in Berlin and Karlsruhe, uh, Bodenlos, uh, in English, uh, Globale, without firm, gr firm ground. And I think this cartogram shows um, Flusser's nomadic life and how he combined different fields of knowledge, connecting the methods of science uh, with art, culture, and people. So his philosophy was very important for me when two years ago, I took the responsibility of merging three departments into one. So uh, the current department for education is a mix of former environmental education department, the inclusion citizenship department, and the art education department. But before I explain the challenges of this process, let's see a short video of Newton so that you can follow uh, me better. So the, the visitation area, um, it's 140 hectares, but there is also a private area where visitors cannot go, like 240 hectares. And there are more than 500 works of art exhibition and 23 galleries and also two, uh, 22 open air works. Uh, in your team started in the 80s, uh, but was open to the public in 2006, so it's uh, a bit more than 10 years old. This is um, a work by Olafur Eliasson before, this is the Vanda Orchidies. Um, this is a work by Tunga, who died last year and was an inspiration for Bernardo Paz, which is the, the idealizator of the museum. This is Yayoi Kusama work. I'm coming to that again later. Siudu Meirelis, which is also very uh, well known abroad. Uh, photographer Miguel Rio Branco. And um, so here you can have like a, a, a vision from the, from the up. This, we are also talking about this gallery by Adriana Varejão. Matthew Burney installation. We also have concerts and uh, plays, theater plays. This is Chris Burden installation called Bean Drop. Benone, Elevazione. Well, like many, many. Uh, pieces outside and inside. So, uh, as you saw in the, vis in the video, the physical spaces, they contribute to promote this blurring of boundaries. Um, but one of our biggest challenges um, is to deal with a great, a wide variety of uh, public. We offer activities to students and teachers from both uh, private and state schools, to socially underprivileged children and teenagers, 
to members of traditional communities with African roots, employees of other departments, elderly people, and paying and no paying visitors. Along with that, we have a very diverse team, especially now that we emerged into one, only one department. And together with my team, we, are, we have been experiencing the difficulties and benefits of taking on a transverse approach. We are uh, a young team of 60 employees come from different backgrounds, academic backgrounds like engineering, cultural studies, philosophy, biology. So it's not like one could think that we have only biologists and uh, art historians. Um, uh, sorry, I need some water. Then we have, as I told you, have been uh, fa facing a lot of challenges. And so how can we integrate the team? How can we standardize process and working methodologies? How we find a common vocabulary and how we evaluate projects? Like common vocabulary really uh, from like the biologists all of a sudden had to deal with the word plastic in a sense of the art, so usually thinking of plastic as this element, and then all of a sudden, okay, plastic, but how is it, or her hermetic? I don't know in English if it's like this, it's like a, a concept from the physics, and in the art world, we use it in a different way, so those kind of uh, things. And to reach a common goal, we share different worldviews. We try to, to, to respect also people's individuality and their specific knowledge, although we work transversally. Uh, so to manage all those challenges, a very useful tool is our in-house training. It's a collaborative process happens uh, every Monday when the, the museum is closed to visitors. So we decide together um, what will be the, the topics, also to help us in our free thematic tours. So the free thematic uh, tours, they change subjects every two months. Uh, so this is, was, um, a training called Dossier Water. And before that training, we used to have two kinds of thematic tours. One was focusing only on art. So if the visitors came to the museum and want to know about art galleries and art, contemporary art, this person would go to that tour and would uh, um, know, uh, know, know that the, the guide or the mediator wouldn't talk about uh, the botanic collection. And in the afternoon, there was another tour only focusing on botanic and environmental issues. Now we have an integrated tour, it's like one thematic tour. And uh, the, the turning point was with the training dossier water. So along uh, six weeks on, on Mondays, we were talking about how to relate the cultural aspect of water with the natural uh, aspect. So we were addressing uh, water in urban context, virtual, wa virtual water trade, climate change, but also the symbolism of art of water in mythology and contemporary art and also in art history. So here we have Caravaggio's uh, Narcissus painted almost 400 years ago, 400 years ago. and beside Yayoi Kusama's Narcissus Garden in Yotin uh, from the 90s. And yes, so now in Yotin is also following the Agenda 2030 for sustainable development. And because of that, we are bringing the 17 global goals to our activities. And then we went back to the thematic of water, but this time we were focused on gender. 
And through this infographic of the Inter-American Developed Bank, we found out that water and gender are very connected. For instance, in places where the access of water is limited, women are the ones usually responsible for getting water. And in communities where there, is, there are toilets and clean, wa clean water, the, um, the number of girls increased in schools, uh, increased, enrolled in the schools, increases 15%. So women can go study instead of taking water. So we decide then to combine two global goals, gender equality and clean water and sanitation, to talk about water and we built the thematic tool, Water and Gender, but always like using our collections to talk about that with the visitors. And so we could address water as a social and politi political uh, commodity. Another outcome of our effort uh, of working in a transverse way is this book we just finished called Tinhotin Transverso. So in that book, for the first time in a publication, we are presenting information about plants, gardens, uh, artists, piece of uh, arts, uh, in an integrated manner. So we suggested possible itineraries in the, in the park, like in your team, to address 13 major topics that uh, we, we found out, like we chose uh, based on our uh, daily experiences. So those topics are, for instance, food, diversity, uh, freedom, uh, climate change, sustainability. So let's take, uh, for instance, food. is a very basic and relevant topic. So at first sight, it seems to be difficult to talk about food uh, with our collections. But when we look more attentively, we find many possibilities to connect uh, the collections to food. So one option is to start, to start the journey with that uh, work of Brazilian artist Marilá Dardot. The name is, uh, th this work is named after an uh, essay written by German philosopher Martin Heidegger in around 1936. So maybe some, who could tell us in the audience? <laughs> Come on, I'm sure you know. <laughs> well, so it's uh, the orange of the work of art. And with uh, earth, seeds, and watering, people can plant ideas. So it's a very poetic word. Uh, then in these ceramic vases, uh, people can plant the, the letters and put words together. And then uh, the, the main targets of that book are teachers from public schools. But of course, it's open to all the visitors. But then in this uh, uh, ambience, like the teachers could uh, ask the, the the, the, the teachers could ask the students if they are aware, for instance, of uh, genetically modified uh, products and the monopole by, by a few um, companies. And after that uh, piece of work, we could move to the gardens of all senses. It has aromatic and medicinal plants offering a sensory experience and here, teachers and students could talk about the origins of foods, the methods of production, like agriculture, family agriculture, or like how can we plant food in urban environments. And the next stop could be the gallery by Adriana Varejão, is that one you've seen before in the video. Uh, so what does this painting look like? It reminds us of the typical Portuguese tiles and its Baroque church. Uh, but how does this work uh, of art relate to food? So one possibility is to get back to this Portuguese influence, like in the, in the colonial period, the Portuguese people brought uh, culinary, their culinary to Brazil, 
uh, and it still has an impact on our eating habits. Uh, but besides that, uh, we have also the influence uh, of African and indigenous uh, legacy. No, we have this. So, as I told you in the beginning, Brazil is a very uh, diverse, and those three main um, uh, people, like group of people, are like very present on on the identity of the the people. So. But do the new generations recognize those influences and how are they distributed in this huge territory of Brazil? So this is, uh, is, was only a taste of the multiple perspectives that uh, we can have using Yachin as a space to engage the visitors in discussions about contemporary issues. Uh, there will never be a linear route to be followed in your team offers a unique experience to its visitors. It makes us wonder, it teases us to broaden our uh, way of thinking. Um, it challenges our ideas of how a museum should be. It questions the present and the past, but looks forward to the future and has the courage and the wish to transform itself constantly. And it offers a sensory experience, helping us to connect to nature, to art, to ourselves, and to our vulnerable and also fragile and contradictory human condition. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm happy to take your questions. And I hope that I have, I have awakened the curiosity to come to Brazil visit us.